we had, I've done this before. I, I do it all the time, actually. Play with teams. I'm serious. Put yourself on one of the teams. And what do you guys say? Oh, I was doing this stuff better. So, well, work harder. Sometimes I play the whole class against me. Well, they beat the teacher, trust me. <laughs> but that's the point. They love to beat the teacher. Play the teacher. Nothing's more fun than when you're up there and you make a mistake and they go, the They love it because you're human. That's a good thing to show them, okay? So, I like this one as well, if you're coaching. What you also do is make this a written sign. The paper just goes around and around the room. Start 20 kids, 20 different sentences. And as it comes, you have to now read, change, so add, which makes the change, and pass the next. And you can literally go, pass, pass. Give them some time to read, of course. But otherwise, if you get one poor student who's like taking her time, and she's taking her time because she wants the most perfect word, and there's like 20 papers lined up behind her. So you've got to have that system where it can just keep circulating around the room, like the blood stream. And that's so much fun, too. And it's quiet. <coughs> Exercise in the same stuff, but quiet. So, rumor has it. Trying your cell phone, have you played that game before? No? A little bit? Have you heard that? I start a whisper over here. And at the very end, we find out what happens to it. Okay? That game is uh, it's not my favorite at all. Not my favorite at all. I like this one here. Rumor has it, it works off two things either dialogue or a story. Depending on level of kid, more complex, much more simple. Charles advice is brilliant. Simple works. As we can see by our five lovely big volunteers, simple is sometimes quite difficult. So don't assume that they can do this. Think of this dialogue. I love how you do the flat. Oh, I don't like it very much. Alex, why? What's wrong with it? Strange things happen there at night. Really? Like what? Well, the first night I moved in, I went to bed about 10 p.m. Suddenly I heard footsteps outside my bedroom, but there was no one there. No way. Great little start. It's a story in dialogue. Something's going to happen. Now, what happens if rumor has it is simple. I take five people, and I don't trust you. I don't trust you at all. <laughs> you take the five people and you send them out of the room. This group, they would just not come back. You send them out. You read the story, you read the story to the kids. Read the dialogue to the kids. Have two kids read it out loud together for everyone to listen. And everyone listens. No notes. They listen. Then we bring the first one back in. The job of the whole class now is to what? Tell what? Tell the story. How do you do that? What movie was the last movie that you saw? What movie did you see? Which one? Kite Runner. Perfect. Yeah? Tell us. Um, <clears throat> what happened in the movie? Oh, that board already. That thing pretty much touched me. It's hard, isn't it? It's a movie. It's a two hour long movie. And well, how, do you, how do you communicate this? This is about paraphrasing, right? Condensing what you listen to into your thoughts, into your understanding, and then, boom, communicating it. I will need essential vocabulary. I will need some structures. I need to understand what happens. And then I have to, oh boy, speak. But I have all my friends to help me. All of us are going to help. Oh, yeah, 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 and then, and then this happened, yeah, yeah, and then this happened, and then this happened. Remember. One person came back in, and he is now listening to everything. What does he then do? No. Number two, come on in. Yes. 
So apparently, what happened in the movie is blah, 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 this, this, that, that, this, that, no help. Now, they're going to listen to him explain what he knows. Number three comes in. Blah, blah. Number four comes in. You don't have to go very far. And then at the very end, the last person says, blah, 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 this happened, blah, 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 that happened. There was some guy living in a house and some noises were there and he got scared but he didn't know what happened. And then I say, is that right? And then all together, we read it one more time. And we compare. And then you ask questions. What was missing? What details were important but got lost? Listening skills. But it's kind of fun. Because there's also coaching involved in this. So it does get a little bit, uh, how do you say, difficult very quickly. But what a simple activity this is. What a simple activity this thing is. So, like I say, this one here, listening and speaking. Very tight. But you've got to really prep your students for this one. Practice with them. Before you actually do the game, do it with just you. And they'll realize, ooh, this is hard. And give them some strategies, noting important words, important structures, there is, there are. Whatever that might be. Okay? Very powerful. Very powerful. I put this up here for a simple reason. Never, never do an activity with your, with your children without some feedback. Especially something as complicated as rumor has it. Because those questions are important for them to learn about learning. Does that make sense? You're not just English teachers, are you? You are teaching my children. Literally, my children are in the system. And my teachers are teaching my babies. I don't want you best to teach them that present perfect. Because you know what? I don't care about present perfect. What I do care about is, can they learn? Do they understand? Are you helping them? And by asking them this, what you're doing is you're bringing that learning back to the process. Metacognition, if you will. Teach them how to think. Show them the strategies and make them reflect. Make them think about it. It makes them better learners. Makes them better. One of my daughters was studying wings, aerodynamics and wings, a little quiz. And she couldn't remember the properties of air. Air has mass, air has volume, air has this, air is that. I mean, it was like, do I look like I don't understand? I don't understand this. But I'm helping her to understand her study mix for this quiz. And she was almost in tears because she just couldn't remember. You know why? There are nine properties of air. I found out. Nine properties. And she bit like seven. She got to eight. And then she started repeating. She couldn't get those nine. No, we did it. We actually made a dance. Not really a dance dance, but we started doing air has size, air has mass. So that's how the, the dance started. Are you laughing? Baby? But that's what we did. We started to laugh. My daughter, who was almost crying, started to laugh. She learned that dancing in like less than five minutes. Two minutes, really. Right? It's a way to tap that language onto a framework. Context is key. This is telling them to become aware of context. That's why it's important. Have these discussions with your kids. Don't just talk about your topics. Talk about learning. Important. Attitude. I love this. Very, very, very simple. Nothing big. Carbon paper is beautiful. This is one of those big social emotional projects. You have this in my hand, right? And it circulates around the room, and literally, I have you write something about me. I write something about me. Write something about me. You can assign the language. You can say sentences. You can say adjectives. You can say 
have to draw a picture, take a symbol, whatever it is. And then we have to stand up and we have to talk about our pictures and our posters. And then we put them up on the wall. Now you say, come on, man, we say? Never. Oh, yeah. Change the hand, though. What do you do? Get them to draw their partner. Remember that blindfolded, blindfolded Picasso with the goofy face? Make them do that exercise first, and then they put all that information out of it. Really? Because the pictures are all so silly looking. It doesn't feel childish. It's so much fun, and we're sharing. So this idea about doing this is not just for our little guys. Because you see hands in the, in the primary all the time, don't you? You see hands in kinder all the time. Change it by doing that blindfolded Picasso, and then put a bunch of language around it in the we say, and put it up and still say it. It's one way to bridge that gap where it gets too cool with big kids. All right. <clears throat> My volunteers, here we go again. Stand up. What you need for this is a song and a bag. Come <laughs> on. Hey, Sam. Is lining up or something? Or something? All right. <laughs> Alright. Everybody, together. Row, row, row your boat. You're right there, really tough there, really hard. Ready, here we go. Row, row, row your boat. The stream. Oh, that's good, thank you, that's good. They're going now. What do you need is this? You need a blanket? Better watch it. Better watch it. Jump on the boat. Not so happily, please. That is Chelsea. Come on. Okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Rocks and rocks. You can stand on it and have it. Watch it later, no problem. Rocks and rocks is simple. These are the, for all those songs that are in our course books that you want our children to learn. Take those songs out of context. Right? Think about this. We put the software up there. We watch the software. We watch the animation. And the kids watch and they sing, sing, and do, do. Right? That's what they do. That's the context. Change the context. They vote. I'm going to demonstrate when you look. Roll, 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 what they have to do is sing the verse. But do you guys know the other verse the world? It's not just merrily, 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 merrily. What's that other verse like the crocodile? If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Good. Off the boat. Now the boat gets smaller. Oh man. <clears throat> Feels a bit smaller. Back on the boat. And they sing the verse again. Roll, roll, roll your boat right down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't go and have this scream. Now I'm a crocodile, and I can actually just do some little fun stuff like this, but that's not going to be a problem because the boat's still pretty big. 20 kids, not so big, off the boat. Alright. What was that word? Hug. Well, 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 we're going to get me down the stream. If you see a don't forget the stream. Oh, they're so good. Guess what? Guess what? Off the boat? That boat is on the boat. I'm kidding. No! Oh, man. On the boat! Now. <laughs> Out of three, I want you to say, ready? We're going to get on the boat, If you fall off, you become a crocodile. 
and then to stand up, we have to actually look, check, read, run, whoops, over here, coaching, 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 right? Simple way to use psychological vocabulary, it gets it into the proper context. We're not drilling alphabetical order for drilling the vocabulary. They're thinking farmer, 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 farmer the whole time. And they're problem solving. This is not hard. But you watch. If I gave this to these guys, whoa, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> the deck of cards is interesting. Functional language. Good job. Good. Who has more power? I have more power. like this. 
We can simplify them for the little ones and expect simple answers and responses back. But have discussion time. I used to do every week for five to ten minutes coffee talk in my class. Coffee talk. I put a word up. I put a question up. I put a number up. A, a cool fact. Let me just talk about it. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? You know what happened? The kids asked if they could bring their own fact or number or picture to start the conversation. There are no notes. There's no lecture. Free talk. Story time. Free talk. That's the basis of what we do in this business. If you want to draw cards in perfect, oh, well, you have know, at it. Well, do it. Your workbooks will do it for you. Your weekend worksheets will do it for you. But without you, your children will not speak. That's the beautiful part of your job. Your magic. So everybody, we're going off to lunch here. Don't forget, if you have those photocopies available for you, not for everybody, unless you're going to make some actions for you. I want to thank all the organization, the school, and all of you.